The roots of the Missouri Air National Guard in our wing trace back to a rich aviation history. It may come as a surprise to many that our origins can be traced back to Texas as the 110th Aero Squadron, which was organized at Kelly Field on August 14, 1917, with a mission of aircraft maintenance and repair. This was a mere 14 years after the Wright brothers' historic first powered flight in 1903, marking the rapid progress of aviation during that time. The 110th Aero Squadron would eventually be redesignated as the 110th Observation Squadron and relocated to St. Louis. This move was made possible by a Major Bill Robertson and his brothers, Lieutenants Frank and Dan Robertson, who were the owners of the Robertson Aircraft Company. On June 23, 1923, the 110th Observation Squadron was federally recognized, marking the beginning of our proud history in Missouri. The 110th Observation Squadron was allotted to the National Guard 35th Division and originally equipped with one World War I Surplus Curtis JN-4 Jenny aircraft, which was purchased through officer donations. Our fleet soon expanded to include a variety of aircraft as we took on observation and reconnaissance duties, transitioning through aircraft such as the D-4, TW-3, OH-2C, PT-1 Trusty, OH-11, OH-2H, OH-17, and OH-38B from 1925 to 1933, marking the evolution of our capabilities and expertise in the field of aviation. With each new aircraft and mission, the 110th Observation Squadron continued to uphold its commitment to excellence and professionalism, establishing a strong foundation for the Missouri Air National Guard and our wing, which carried us forward. The chief pilot on the St. Louis to Chicago airmail run for the Robertson brothers was a young aviator named Charles A. Slim Lindbergh. Lindbergh joined the 110th Observation Squadron in 1924 and was a captain when he made his historic solo transatlantic flight to Paris in the spirit of St. Louis in 1927, earning worldwide acclaim. This is Lowell Thomas in New York. He made it. Charles A. Lindbergh, Lucky Lindy as they call him landed at Le Bourget Airport, Paris, at 5.24 this afternoon. During those early years, the men, equipment, and the unit's headquarters were located in various places around St. Louis, including a gas station on Manchester and a small meeting room above a grocery store on Grand Avenue. However, in 1931, we moved to a new hangar at Lambert Field, marking a significant milestone in our unit's history. In the 1930s, summer field training allowed officers to fly a variety of aircraft, and enlisted members honed their skills on the K-17 aerial reconnaissance and mapping camera. As aviation technology progressed, our unit received new aircraft in the late 1930s, including the OH-38E and OH-47, which further enhanced our capabilities and operational readiness. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. When World War II broke out, the 110th was federally mobilized and underwent a name change to become the 110th Tactical Reconnaissance Squadron. During the early 1940s, we welcomed several new aircraft to our fleet, including the OH-52 Owl, OH-46, Stenson OH-49 Artillery Spotting Utility Aircraft, Observation Monoplane L-4 Piper, and our first bomber, the A-20 Havoc. We served in Australia, New Guinea, the Philippines, and Japan. We transitioned to fighter planes in 1944, first flying the P-39 Air Cobra, P-40 Warhawk, and P-51 Mustang. Our members are credited with destroying 123 Japanese aircraft and at least 13 ships, earning us a presidential unit citation in 1944. In 1946, we started using a converted P-51, now designated the F-6 Mustang, for tactical reconnaissance missions. After the war, the 57th Fighter Wing and the 110th Fighter Squadron were federally recognized. Major Charles Du Bois, a World War II flying ace and former member of the famed Flying Tigers, became the commander of the 110th Fighter Squadron. 
In 1947, we became the 71st Fighter Squadron. As we entered the 1950s, we added several new aircraft to our fleet, including the medium bomber B-25 Mitchell, trainer aircraft T-6 Texan, light bomber B-26 Invader, military transport C-47 Skytrain, and the C-45 Expediter. In 1951, we were mobilized for the Korean conflict for 21 months. During this time, we briefly became Texans once again as we moved to Bergstrom Air Force Base in Austin, Texas. There, we became the 131st Fighter Escort Wing of Strategic Air Command. But our time as Texans in an escort wing was short-lived, and later that year, we moved to George Air Force Base in California and became the 131st Fighter Bomber Wing. As our wing began to take an increased role in flying bombers, our mission would quickly change to a fighter role. For the next 40 years, we would be focused on fighters, although bombers would ultimately be our future. We sent a significant number of personnel on overseas assignments, with tactical units rotating in support of NATO operations in Iceland and many individuals seeing action in the Korean arena. In November 1952, demobilization was completed and we returned home to Lambert Field. After the Korean War call-up, we received a new mission as the 131st Light Bombardment Wing. The wing entered the jet age in the late 1950s with the acquisition of the T-33 T-Bird, F-80 Morningstar, and F-84 Thunderstreak. The solemn vow we each of us gave to West Berlin in time of peace will not be broken in time of danger. As a Cold War deterrent, we were mobilized in 1961 to augment NATO forces during the Berlin Crisis and were assigned to Toul Rosaire's Air Force Base in France. We returned home in 1962 and the F-100 Super Sabre became our primary aircraft, remaining an integral part of our unit for more than 17 years. In 1977, we were honored when Charles Lindbergh's widow, Anne Moreau Lindbergh, gave permission to designate the 110th Tactical Fighter Squadron as Lindbergh's own. In 1978, our unit began converting to the homegrown McDonnell Douglas F-4C Phantom and upgraded to the F-4E model in 1985. Additionally, the C-12 King Air, a twin turboprop passenger and cargo aircraft, joined the 131st Fleet. In September 1991, the 131st Fighter Wing converted from the F-4 to the McDonnell Douglas F-15 AB Eagle. The conversion was completed within 18 months, returning the wing to full speed. In 1993, the twin-engine turboprop C-26A Metroliner arrived as a new addition to our fleet. These days we believe that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. The cockpit's not answering. Somebody's stabbed in business class. I, I don't know. I think we're getting hijacked. Yeah. Oh, my God! In the aftermath of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the role of the Air National Guard changed. The entire National Guard saw an increase in operational tempo with reserve forces being tapped to support America's war on terrorism. The 131st immediately provided critical support to Operation Enduring Freedom and eventually Operation Iraqi Freedom too. Our highly skilled personnel were deployed to work in various capacities, including intelligence analysis, maintenance, and logistics. Through their unwavering dedication and commitment, we were able to disrupt terrorist networks and degrade their capabilities in the region, further demonstrating our unwavering commitment to defending our nation. In the fall of 2004, our wing began the transition from the F-15AB to the F-15CD model aircraft, making us the first combat-coded F-15 unit in the Air National Guard to have the C models. In 2005, the Department of Defense base realignment and closure recommendations became law, resulting in the realignment of our wing and the relocation of our fighters to other locations. In March 2006, the Department of Defense announced that our wing would become an ANG Classic Associate at Whiteman Air Force Base. While the Air Force has primary ownership of the aircraft, Missouri's Guardsmen will maintain and fly the B-2 Spirit self bombers alongside their active duty counterparts. In August 2008, the first two fighters left our wing, mission ready to assume their new duties in Montana. That October, the wing celebrated our first official unit training assembly at Whiteman Air Force Base with the ribbon cutting of the wing's new headquarters, marking the start of the end of an era at Lambert. In 2009, the move was completed and the wing turned over all F-15 Eagles to other Air National Guard units, while continuing its transition to a B-2 Spirit self-bomber wing at Whiteman Air Force Base. 
The year also saw an increase of operations at Jefferson Barracks Air National Guard Base in South St. Louis. 2010 saw the first of many accolades to come for the wing at Whiteman Air Force Base when the total force team of the 131st Bomb Wing and the U.S. Air Force's 509th Bomb Wing won the coveted Fairchild Trophy for the best bomb wing in the Air Force. The combined wings continue to be among the best of the best, meeting and exceeding expectations during inspections and competitions. In 2011, the 131st Bomb Wing B-2 aircraft participated in support of Operation Odyssey Dawn in Libya, marking a significant milestone for the unit. A tornado warning has been issued until 1.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time for the following period. That same year in April, a devastating Category EF-4 tornado swept through the St. Louis area, causing over $10 million in damage to the Lambert Guard base. Thankfully, no one on the base was injured, but many buildings were damaged, hastening plans for future moves off of Lambert property and to Jefferson Barracks. In 2013, the 131st Bomb Wing successfully passed our initial nuclear surety inspection and achieved full operational capability on August 2, 2013. To this day, the 131st is the only Air National Guard Wing certified for nuclear operations. In the same year, the B-2 Spirit of Missouri was designated as the flagship of our wing. In 2015, the wing participated in major operational exercises, including Red Flag, Neptune Falcon, and constant vigilance in the spring. Additionally, the 157th Air Operations Group deployed in support of Exercise Pacific Century, and the 239th Combat Communications Squadron provided support to the Guard's Sea Burney Enhanced Response Force Package Exercise Evaluation. In September 2017, 140 service members joined forces in the southeastern Missouri region as part of the Operation Healthy Delta Innovative Readiness Training Exercise. Led by our 131st Medical Group, members from the Air National Guard, Active Duty Air Force, and the Navy set up two field-conditioned medical facilities to provide no-cost medical, dental, and ophthalmology support services on a first-come, first-served basis to residents of the local communities. At the conclusion of the exercise, a total of 2,251 patients were seen, and nearly 16,000 procedures were performed. Members of the 131st and 509th Bomb Wings gathered in August 2018 to celebrate the unveiling of a new paint scheme on a geared door of the B-2 Spirit of Nebraska and the bomber's new designation as Lindbergh's own. In 2020 to 2022, members of the 131st Bomb Wing were heavily tasked. Hundreds of guardsmen supported COVID-19 relief efforts, with over 450 personnel mobilizing and deploying across Missouri to assist 605,000 fellow Missourians by supporting food pantries and call centers. Additionally, 131st Airmen helped facilitate the vaccination of more than 465,000 people. During this time frame, the 131st also participated in four bomber task force missions with over 100 airmen deployed to support United States Southern Command and Central Command. In addition to these missions, 30 members of the 131st were engaged in Operations Allies Welcome and Allies Refuge, safely helping to relocate more than 79,000 Afghan refugees. As we celebrate our 100th anniversary on June 23, 2023, we look back at our proud history inherited from the courageous airmen who served in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Operations Enduring Freedom, and other conflicts up to present day. Our heritage is one of both military and civilian service. From responding to natural disasters and humanitarian crises here at home, to deploying overseas to defend our nation's interests, it is this legacy that inspires us as we chart our course into the next hundred years. Whether serving our local communities or the global community, the men and women of the 131st Bomb Wing remain committed to upholding the highest standards of excellence, integrity, and service. We take great pride in our past, and we look forward to the future full of challenges and opportunities, secure in the knowledge that the legacy of Lindbergh's own lives on.